Hey, have you heard? Apple just released the new 11.1 update for Final Cut Pro. Is it hype? Is it cool? What's hot and what is not? I'm Dylan John, the FCP Don, and let's go over this newest update in the no fluff and fun way that we always do. First things first though, make sure you back up Final Cut Pro by going to your applications folder, finding Final Cut Pro, right clicking and clicking compress. If you need to jump back to the old version of FCP at any time, you can just open up that zip file and you'll have that older version there for you. The first thing that Apple has added are, drum roll please, what they call adjustment clips. If you're thinking that sounds a lot like what adjustment layers are, it's because you're right. They're basically the same thing. They are the same thing. So for those unaware of what adjustment layers are, We've had these for a while, but we used to have to download them from different places. When you'd throw one of these over your timeline and you'd add, say, an effect to it, maybe do some color grading on it, it'd affect everything that's underneath it. So you basically can affect your entire timeline just by adjusting this one title. Well, now you don't need to download these anymore because it's built into FCP. And before you go looking for it in your titles, you can't find them there. Instead, you have to go to edit and click add adjustment clip or hit the shortcut option A. By the way, useful tip, if you ever need help finding something in Final Cut Pro, first, subscribe to the channel so that you know everything there is to know about Final Cut Pro. And second, if you go to help and for example, type in adjustment clip, it basically shows you where you can add it. And I'm not adding this animation in post. Final Cut really does this. As you can see though, adjustment clips are a nice magenta color. So they have their own video role actually, which is a nice perk. So if you have some titles over top of your clips, now you can tell which is a title and which is an adjustment layer. So is this hot or not? If this is your first time ever hearing about adjustment clips, I figure I'll call them clips now instead of layers, then this is probably a pretty hot rating for you. But for those of you who have used adjustment clips for a long time, it is a welcome addition, but it's not anything that makes me want to stand on my desk and dance. So I'm going to give it a room temperature rating. Room temperature. It's neither hot nor cold. Old, it's just meh. The next thing that Apple has added is Image Playground to Final Cut Pro. Image Playground is Apple's AI image creation tool. And now that it's been added to Final Cut Pro, you can go to your import button and then click Image Playground. Or alternatively, you can go to File to Import and then hit Image Playground and this nice colorful window will pop up. You can then select a person that's in your Photos app. So I'll just select my ugly mug here. And you'll see it gives a bunch of different options of uh, kind of AI images that freak me out a little bit. I don't think look like me, but look pretty close to me. Anyways, let's say we select this one and you hit done. It gives you some suggestions of, for example, we can have me at sunset. We can have me with a beanie as well. So if you throw all these together, here is me <laughs> with a beanie at sunset. If you wanted it to be more of like a cartoon style, you can click illustration, but from my test, this just looks like absolute garbage. So usually I would leave this on animation if I do use this. And if you wanted to add anything else, you would just type it in here. And then once you hit done, this is gonna save to your library. So here we have this <laughs> kind of scary shot of me. And then from there, you can just drag it over your timeline and use it how you will. So is this hot or is this not? This gets a not hot rating from me. It uh, just sucks right now, it's not that good. I mean, this version of me, if you thought that this scares you every time you click on one of my videos, imagine seeing this all the time. But I assume that this is only gonna get better. So just remember this day because as Apple intelligence improves, so will the AI features in Final Cut Pro. Up next, we have the Quantec Room Simulator Audio Effect. Yes, you can now study astrophysics in Final Cut Pro. Kidding, if you want me to break this down for you in simple terms, add this to your audio. Adjust to one of the different settings by using the quick menu, or you can open it up fully and see this nice UI that it has. And you can basically make it sound like your audio recording was recorded in that space. Yes, I know what some of you are thinking. We kind of already had that with the cathedral effect and some other audio effects. But what I've noticed is that this effect gives you tons more options and they're pretty solid. I do want to point out how silly some of these names are. Ivory, Polish, Juvenator, Larder. Perhaps my English is just bad, but I, I mean, what the hell is a scullery? A scullery is a room in a house traditionally used for washing up dishes and laundering clothes or as an overflow kitchen. What do I look like? Gadsby? Get it? Because he's really rich. 
Basically, you can use these when creating sound design to help your voice audio or your sound effects fit better within your desired scene. So other than voice audio, you could throw this effect on a whoosh sound effect as an example, maybe create a hold frame by pressing Shift H, and now you've created a sound effect that is more than just a whoosh sound. you can get pretty creative with it. Oh, and now, just like our effects layers, we can double click to rename these audio effects. These new audio effects get a warm rating from me. Anything that helps me to stylize my sound design in FCP is welcome. Our beloved magnetic mask got some improvements, mostly bug fixes and some performance improvements, but I'll take anything that makes this tool better than it already was. So if we press Control Command M to add a magnetic mask, we select our subject and analyze, Look at how fast and accurate this is. But let's say we want to delete this mask. With the old version of FCP, this magnetic mask editor would have stayed up even with it deleted. Well now, this closes whenever you delete the magnetic mask. If you ever want to see it again at any time, you can press the keyboard shortcut that they added, Control Option Command M. That's a mouthful, I know, but basically all of the modifier keys right next to each other and then hit M. So is this hot or not? Since I gave the magnetic mask such a hot rating in the last video, anything involving it is still warm to the touch. I appreciate that Apple is still improving this already solid tool. In the old versions of Final Cut, if we added a marker by pressing M, we would not be able to move it without control right clicking and hitting delete. Well, now we can move markers and chapter markers at will just by sliding them to the left or right. And if you want to delete them, you just drag up. And just to note, you can only drag the marker around the clip that you added it to. So you can't slide this all the way across your timeline from clip to clip. We used to have to use an extension called Command Post to have this feature in FCP, so I'm glad that it is built in now. Even though it's a small adjustment, the amount of times that I've had to delete a marker just to add it a few frames before or a few frames after is insane. So this gets a warm rating for me. It is not a super exciting adjustment, but I'm happy about it and I'll likely be using it constantly. If you enter a multicam clip of yours, we can now select a clip and press Shift F and we'll be directed to that original source clip in our browser. So if you need to find a clip quickly for some reason, you can with a keyboard shortcut. That's Shift F. I usually don't need to find the location of my multicam footage. I usually know where it is. So this gets a cold rating from me, but perhaps you're stoked on this. Apple has also added a bunch of different bug fixes, which aren't that exciting, but maybe you've had issues with your final cut. So some of these may make you happy to hear. They fixed an issue where navigating through text fields in list view with the keyboard was blocked by group by headers. They improve the reliability when enabling transform tools with a keyboard shortcut while in a dual display layout. They improved reliability when batch exporting compound clips that contain magnetic masks. They added support for using transcribed captions with a single audio roll component. They improved stability when dragging a library item to a text editor to generate an FCP XML. They improved reliability when upgrading a library that contains 100 FPS clips. They improved reliability when sharing a project that includes RE ProRes MXF Media. They fixed an issue that prevented a LUT from being automatically applied when importing RE Raw MXF clips. They improved performance when applying smooth slow-mo to ProRes 4444 files with an alpha channel on Mac models with an M1 chip. They fixed an issue that caused audio to go out of sync when adding 25 FPS clips to a 23.98 FPS timeline. They fixed an issue that could cause sound to slip out of sync when detaching audio from a clip with a J cut and a through edit. They fixed an issue that caused an MP3 or AAC audio file to have a truncated audio waveform after export. They fixed an issue that caused black frames to be displayed when playing back HEVC clips from a red camera. They fixed an issue that prevented the browser from automatically scrolling to an active cell in list view. And they fixed an issue that caused the selected browser clip to change when show hidden clips was enabled. So what do you think of the new 11.1 update? Hot or not? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and what you would like to see in the next update and have a great rest of your day.